The first question I was ever asked by my homebrew world was, did it have a map? My party had just gotten out of the Sunless Citadel and was given an infested manor to go clear out and make their own. I had really only written down major locations, the kingdoms, their capital cities, and cardinal directions of the kingdom's locations compared to each other. So I told them, not yet, but I would look into making one. I'm going to be honest, I had no clue where to start, so I just started googling. I had only a week to get something basic down, and my drawing skills were terrible. In my frantic search for something, I found a Reddit thread linking me to a website called Asgard's Fancy Map Generator. And just like that, my problem was solved. A couple of rerolls on the maps, and some manual editing, and I had a decent base map, one that I still use today. Today, we are going to go over the best tool for making a new campaign map, Asgard's Fantasy Map Generator, which you can find the link to in the description below. I feel like the hardest part of making a homebrew world is making a map for it, especially for new dungeon masters. Asgard takes most of the growing pains of that away. While it does generate a random fantasy map, it is extremely customizable to your liking. Asgard allows you to edit everything from the cities to the rivers, allowing you to work from a baseline and make it your own. After which you can then upload to Wonderdraft and truly make an awe-inspiring map like I did for my own campaign. So let's take a deep dive into it. When you first open the website up, you'll more than likely get a map like this. The first major note is this doesn't create a full world for you, but more like continents. If you plan on your party to be continent hopping, you'll need more than just one map. As you can see here in this randomly generator map, it has placed rivers, major trade routes, minor trade routes, cities, and a variety of other things. Zooming in allows you to see all of this easily. Clicking on a city will actually bring up the city's stats and information that's randomly generated, along with another randomly generated map made by Watabu's Medieval Fantasy City Generator. The first tab you find yourself at is the Layers tab. It comes with a couple of different layer presets. These are a collection of the most used layers that show you different things. I'll say the one you will be using the most is the political map. This preset gives you a map which shows the borders of the kingdom slash empires of the continent. The next layer is the cultural layer preset. If you hover over one of these many colors, you will get what race is the main dominant force there. This is perfect for figuring out where an orc kingdom is or where an elvish empire is. The religion map does exactly what it says on the tin, giving you an overview of the religions of the world. I don't find this one all that useful personally, but you might find it more useful than I do. The next type of map is the province map. Anyone familiar with Crusader Kings would know this type of map. This map divides those large kingdoms and empires into provinces. Small subjections that either counts or dukes govern for their liege. This allows you to also start thinking about who rules what section and who is the most likely to interact with your party. Next is the biomes map. This one shows you what biomes your world has. This map is based off the temperature and location of your current map on the globe. We'll be looking at how to change both of those variables later on in this video. The height map shows you the elevation of your land, allowing you to get a good sense of where mountains and valleys are located. If you go and click the 3D Scene button, it'll change the view into a 3D map of your world, allowing you to actually see these changes. The physical map layer preset is basically the same as a height map, but has latitude and longitude coordinates enabled. The Places of Interest layer preset is one of my favorite presets. This one shows small bubbles across the map that when you click on it, show a small interesting feature from portals connecting major cities to statues with untranslated glyphs. From beaver migrations to randomly generated dungeons, it is something that allows you to make your world feel more alive and lived in. The military map layer shows you the current units each kingdom has in their locations. Each comes with a generated name and a story on how and why they were created. If you click on them, you will also see how the unit is divided up between infantry, archers, and the like. The pin ultimate layer preset is the emblem map. This layer preset shows the emblem of every single province in your world, allowing you the option to immerse your players more. Your players find a note with someone's emblem on it. 
They quickly rush over to the map and try to match what they found with one that's on it. Turns out, it's the Count's next door's emblem. What is his emblem doing with bandits in the Duke's province? Boom. Instant player engagement. The final preset is just the pure landmass, allowing you to draw your own borders and kingdoms on the landmass of the shape that you like. Now, with the explanation of the layer presets done, let's go over how to customize your own world map. We'll want to go to Options. Now, don't be scared off by the amount of options here, which are self-explanatory, such as Map Name, Year, and Era. Most important is the Height Map and the Culture setting. The Height Map will be the basis of how your content is formed, while the Culture setting is how everything will be named. You have a lot of choices for your Height Map. The preference really depends on what type of campaign you want to run. Shattered or Archipelago Height Map might be best if you're doing a naval-based campaign, while the Old World is perfect for that fantasy map feeling. Your culture choices have some variety as well. If you go with a more high fantasy culture, all your provinces, cities, and kingdoms will be named depending on what race owns it. You'll find more elvish names in domains that are dominantly elves versus the more human names that you can find in human domains. But there is a list of oriental, European, and even ancient if you really want a variety of cultures. If you click configure world on the bottom left, this allows you to control the temperature of your world like we talked about earlier. This is also where you can control how much precipitation your world receives and where your continent is located on the globe. All these factors influence your biomes and height maps that we looked at earlier. The tools tab is where you can manually manipulate what randomly general world you have, from configuring your states or height map to adding bergs and rivers. Now that you know how to edit things and how to influence the random generator, let's see how to actually get this campaign map out to your players. The style tab is our first step. Here, once again, are a few different preset styles. These are really to your taste or to your campaign. Playing some Shadowrun? Go with Cyberpunk. A naval campaign? Watercolor might be your best bet. Standard high fantasy? Then ancient is always a good choice. Now, you can click save to save this map to either your machine, Dropbox, or even your browser. This is perfect if you use a computer to help you run your games. You can also export it as a JPEG or PNG. Setting the quality of this allows you to zoom in and actually read your city names from the JPEG or PNG. Then, you can take it to your local print shop, print it out on a 24x36, allowing your players an actual map of your world. It also has Foundry VTT integration, bringing it into your world with notes for every bird on your map, allowing you to quickly give it to your players for your online Dungeons Dragons game. I'm hoping this saved you some time in making your world. If you like the content I make and want more, make sure to like and subscribe. I try to push out content weekly.